Okay. So, hello. Um, it's a very last session. <laughs> uh, well, so far, this is the famous RNA sequencing core, uh, data, RNA sequencing data analysis course. And you've learned a lot of techniques to analyze single cell data, um, including normalization and clustering and uh, uh, cell type identification, so on. And actually, I, I'm going to present a computational method to analyze spatial data. And actually, you will find that the analysis of spatial transcriptomics data would be very similar to what you have learned so far. And um, actually, there, there will be a lot of computational methods are being developed so far. I mean, um, this is just a one specific method that I'm working on. And it would be really nice if I could give a broad overview of the computational tools available, but actually that's not possible because they are not published yet. And I'm sorry, this is also not published yet. <laughs> so I would, I, I would, gonna, I would, uh, I'm gonna release this um, PDF file later uh, after I, put, I, I, after the uh, manuscript is available online and you will find the uh, a uh, link that um, has the physical notebook. Actually, this is Python package and so that you can follow the steps. And also you will later find that um, it is quite similar to what you've learned so far. So um, the method, uh, before we're going to start, this method is to call cell types from the spatial transcriptomics data. Actually, it's spot-based uh, spot transcriptomics data. Uh, I'm working with uh, working with uh, the the awesome fish data generated at the uh, actually by Lars and the awesome fish data, and I'm looking for the cell type in the data. So what is the cell type? I briefly uh, just uh, uh, talk about this again, uh, which is al already discussed earlier. Um, there are several cell types, but actually. The cell types are cells with different shapes and functions, this is obvious, but um, how can we say that this is, um, can, this can be, can be uh, detected by, identified by looking at the gene expression profiles? Actually, it is also known that some genes are expressed uh, higher or lower uh, depending on cell states. And actually, it's hard to say that gene expression profile, it is, it is possible to identify all of the cell types based on the expression profiles. But um, um, so some of some people um, do the clustering very, very, uh, can I say, um, in, in very small clusters to find everything that they can find in the data. But some of them just prefer to cluster in very large clusters and that these are the uh, this can be class, uh, classified as large clusters, but actually um, there are ongoing uh, there are also ongoing efforts to uh, to find the difference <coughs> between the cells, cell states and cell types uh, based on co uh, the gene uh, based on the correlate, uh, correlating the gene expression profiles. And uh, uh, you, you look at the data to correlate this to the actual shape and functions in in, in the tissue. But here I will focus on the gene expression profiles and um, by looking at this to cluster the, uh, the data to find the cell types and identify and map on the, on the image. So briefly overview the thing that the sequencing data. So um, actually the way as you learn uh, sequencing the individual cell and cluster them and identify the cell types for each cluster. And uh, there are challenges, uh, there are dropouts, as you learned, and there are batch effects and also confounding factors you need to uh, deal with. And um, there are a lot of dimensions, and thanks to the dimension, uh, curse of dimensionality, uh, you know, after that, uh, um, um, without proper processing, what you will see is very big one cloud. But actually, for the multiflex fish data that I'm currently working on, is really sensitive and accurate as Lars presented. 
and it also gives you location of the mRNA and then you can actually look it back to the image that uh, where the cell is and you can see the cell type is, how, how cell type is distributed in the tissue. And this is done by um, uh, the usual, usual way to do this is to do cell segmentation. And after that, you, do, you, you count the number of mRNAs within each cell and then cluster and identify the cell types. You see that these two steps are very similar to what you will do for the single cell RNA sequencing data analysis. And that's what I'm going to talk about. So, but actually these, these two steps are okay, but um, the problem is that the segmentation. So as, as Lars explained, segmentation is not easy because of the complex uh, shapes and also uh, requires images to uh, look at the clear uh, cell borders like um, well, some, some people use this DAPI or poly-A image, some people use this immuno uh, 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 process images for, to highlight the bo cell borders, but it, that's not uh, possible for every tissue. It's not guaranteed that it works for every tissue. And, and also there will be missing problems so that uh, it makes harder for you to determine the cell borders. So um, there are several efforts, on, uh, several efforts to improve the cell segmentation. But um, my approach is that um, by just looking at the mRNA distribution, because of, thanks to the sensitivity of the uh, fish, fish method, already the mRNA distribution already looks very similar to the cell shape. So, maybe we can just do this uh, without doing cell segmentation, just looking at the location of the mRNA. So uh, this is our method called the SUM, and um, this is totally spot-based spatial cell type calling method, which is ba only based on the location of cell, uh, location of mRNA, and um, it's written in Python, as I explained. Uh, the requirement is that uh, if the two requirements met in the data, so the location of mRNA is given, and, uh, and if the distribution mRNA is very uniform, and it means that the sensitivity of the method is very high, then we can just, uh, we can just do the, to run this method. Um, this method is based on the uh, ma uh, mathematical method called kernel density estimation. This is um, estimating the density of the of the uh, of the spots uh, by summing up kernels. Uh, kernels is just a function that is uh, symmetrical, and at uh, at uh, at each mRNA position, I use the Gaussian kernel here, and um, so which works like um, the summing of kernels means that when you sum up the con sum up the Gaussian kernels on each spot, for instance, in this image, and for each spot, uh, each spot in, you can see in the dots in, in the bottom, and um, when, when you sum up a lot of uh, Gaussian kernels, for instance, the one in the middle uh, with very high peak, and there are a lot of Gaussian kernels are summed up and it makes a lot of pe uh, large peak like this, and you will see that the density of mRNA, okay, this density of the mRNA is very high in this region. And I selected the Gaussian kernels uh, with, uh, that matches to the diam uh, half of diameter, diameter of the cell so that the reconstructed uh, density would follow the shapes of the cell. And after that, I uh, would like to explain with the uh, specific example of some fish data, uh, Ouroboros or, uh, uh, single molecule fish, which is called awesome fish. And, uh, this is data from mouse somato somatosensory cortex, and this is two-dimensional data, and with 33 genes. And what I did is uh, running the kernel density estimation for every gene available in the data, and I reconstruct the uh, the density of of the of each each gene. And then after that, I stack them. To, to build to build a vector field, so which means that it can, uh, in every position in image you will, you will see thirty three uh, uh, components of vector, and each each component of the vector is the expression of the gene, which means that you will now now um, the mRNA data will, uh, is continuous, but in this case after I run KDE and I stack them and build the vector field, then it becomes continuous and you will, you will be able to see the expression profile for, of, 
every position in the image, every location in the image. And now you can compare the gene expression of each pixel. So each pixel is each unit volume yeah, gene expression to find clusters. But because there are a lot of vectors here uh, in the vector field, there are 7 million vectors uh, in this image. Uh, and there's also awesome fish data. So I just roughly selected uh, the vectors based on the local, uh, local maxima of the, of the, uh, of the error norm, which is a summation of the, of the expression values. And um, based on the local maxima, and I clustered it, and this is the cluster result, looks very nice. And I was able to identify as an, uh, the comparable number of clusters uh, that, was, that was found in, in the awesome fish paper. And despite of the difference of the clustering method that I used. Uh, and this, uh, for the clustering, I used the normalization method for the single RNA sequencing data analysis, which is SC transform. And also I use the cluster method for the single RNA sequencing data analysis, which is shared nearest neighbor, uh, weighted by Jacquard index and plus uh, the Luba community detection algorithm. And after that, I identified it, uh, it um, clusters uh, cell types by comparing co correlation of, of, cell, uh, of, the, uh, of each cluster centroid to the known signatures. So it's pretty much the same as the single cell RNA sequencing data analysis. And after that, I, uh, each cluster centroid is mapped back to the vector field by calculating correlation, uh, Pearson correlation. And this is the map generated by our method in, on the left side. And on the right side, there is segmentation based cell time map. And you can see that our regenerated uh, cell time map is really, really clear. And you see that, uh, for instance, the, the yellow uh, cell type is the ependymal cells. And see that um, the, the structure is, uh, is actually missing on the right side, for instance, in the bottom, bottom area. But um, in our case, it is very nicely reconstructed. And also, um, we found a lot of exercise. It's um, actually uh, it's not clearly seen here but um, that is missing from, from the segmentation-based cell time map. That's because the express gene expression, overall gene expression of the, um, of the astrocyte is very low. So in the poly-A uh, image that is used for segmentation, or well, the, the poly-A signal of the astrocyte is really, really low. It is, not comp it is uh, hard to be identified from, I mean, um, uh, identified from the background, so a lot of uh, a lot of exercises were missing on the on the right side, but um, we found a lot of them. So we also tried with another data and tested our method, and this is mouse hypo, uh, hypothalamic preoptic region, and this is imaged by Murphish, and and this data it is. It, uh, the location of mRNA is provided in three-dimensional space. So um, there is, uh, it, it is very thin, but it's nine micrometers. So you can see the, uh, it is comparable to the uh, size of the cell. And there are more number of genes, 135 genes. And this is um, combinatorial uh, uh, multiflex fish, fish method. So the sensitivity is slightly lower than the also fish data, but still it was very, it, it is very good. So I, we tried our method it, it, it result, and the result is, it looks very nice. So it's reconstructed the vector field and there are, it's three dimensional data. The, the number of vectors are even larger, but we, after we select L1 maxima, it is reduced, uh, reduced to around uh, uh, 10,000 vectors. And after that, we could also cluster them and we found the cluster result like this. And, and this, is, this, this uh, tissue contains a lot of cell types. So um, uh, we followed the, the same uh, color that is used to uh, uh, color the, uh, the tissue in the, in the original paper. And these, these are inhibitor neurons and these are excited tetra neurons and, um, and in, in, in the largest cluster. And the other uh, small set types in the, in, your, in in around clusters, and this is the set type map generated by our method. The left on the left side, this is our set type map, 
at the time mission, uh, the, sorry, uh, jet uh, uh, position at four, mi four micrometer, and that is quite comparable to the, is, it's, uh, there's something wrong with the image, I think. Uh, the, 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 it is quite comparable to the original, uh, originally reported image uh, set time map uh, that is in the, in the paper, in the original paper. So, as I said, it is three dimension. Yes. 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 Uh, so I, I I will explain this once again. So uh, after I cluster the after after I cluster the vectors with the selected vectors, and actually each cluster centroid, I I can calculate the cluster centroid, and actually we can calculate the correlation between each cluster centroid to every pixel in the in the vector field. Yes, yes. So, so that we can color every every pixel based on the on the correlation to the each, each cluster each cluster centroid. And this is three dimensional cell type map, and uh, I only show the two dimensional image, but um, there are movies, and these are excitatory neuron. Uh, although this this is very, very in this this movie is very fast. I hope you can see this, but um, you see that um, these spots. I mean, I can say these blobs. These cells are moving slightly, moving, which is that um, actually the cell is the cell is okay. I can say like in 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 the tissue. So when you see in the in the uh, jet equals to zero plane, then uh, you will see that the cell is here. But on the top of the of the tissue, you will see that the cell is here. But actually, the cell is is actually located like this. So that's what we can see. And the, the neuron is very large, so we can see these are moving slightly moving. You see. And um, case of astrocyte, these are smaller than neuron. So in this case, you see that some exercises are appear, some exercises appear and disappear. And because it sweeps uh, through the cell body and then goes to the background. Yeah, so that's uh, the method that I developed. Um, I, I developed a method to analyze just one method, just one specific method to analyze the sp spatial transcriptomic, uh, spot based uh, spatial transcriptomics data. And this is segmentation free method to call cell types and to very high resolution of the, uh, of the reconstructed cells, cell types, cell type maps. And um, it produces very, very detailed structure of uh, cell types in tissue. And furthermore, uh, it is possible to find the biological uh, findings that were this that was discoverable. I can say uh, that was discovered in the earlier papers. Um, yeah, I would like to thank to the people involved with the project, and um, especially Won Il Choi, uh, uh, contributed uh, con a lot, contributed a lot to this project, and other uh, colleagues. Uh, um, and Lars here and uh, contributed for the data analysis. Yeah, thank you so much.